Hello and greetings. This is Larry Tantarelli. I'm the editor and publisher of the Blue Chip Daily Trend Report, and we've got today a brief educational video. Also, it's a market update video. And what I wanted to do, it's near the end of May, May 22nd, and I wanted to share with you our best market calls so far in 2022 calls that we've shared with, with our members. And I think that we've had an exceptional value add so far in 2022. And what I wanted to do is go through some charts. I wanted to go through some posts and show you how we've been positioned, some moves that we've made throughout the course of this year, uh, and take a look at some updates. So we'll start with a brief disclaimer. And what the disclaimer says is that everything in this video is for informational purposes only. It's not a recommendation to buy or sell any securities. It's not to be considered investment advice and past performance is no guarantee of future results. So we're going to talk about our six top market calls for members so far in 2022. And we're going to start with one of the biggest ones. So we sold out of high valuation growth stocks in Q4 2021 before 50 to 90% declines in some instances. So what I'm going to do is walk you through this video. We'll take a look at some posts and I'll walk you through what the thought process was. So in a nutshell, we've closed, we closed over 12 high growth positions in Q4 2021. We alerted members in real time by email on our members Twitter page and in our daily market videos every night after the close. So not only that, but we inform members that we weren't going to add to any of these stocks on the way down and that I expected that they were would underperform in 2022. And we'll take a look at some of those posts. So we sold Netflix before a 72% decline, and I'll walk you through some of these posts. We sold C Limited December 1st. Before we avoided an 80% decline, Roblox, we avoided 77% down, Facebook, we avoided 46% down, Amazon, we avoided 36% affirm, we sold for a profit and avoided a 90% decline. And I've avoided trying to buy any of these stocks in 2022. Uh, and we'll take a look. So quickly, we can go back to November 22 of 2021, and I let members know in real time that I booked final gains in a firm, 8%. We also booked gains at plus 32%, plus 22%, and plus 20%. I also closed out a position in Asana for just under negative 3% total. And this was part of my wholesale uh, across the board selling of these high beta growth stocks, booking gains in many cases, taking some very small uh, losses in some cases. But this was Q4. This was November 2021. If we fast forward, so I closed out Netflix and we'll go down and take a look at the date on this post. December 15th, 2021, I closed out Netflix. That was before a, a very big over 70% decline in Netflix. And I shared with, with website members, this was December 3rd. And I posted, I said, at some point, the high growth charts could get down to a point where they are good longer term buys. But I really did not know where that level is. I said, there's a lot of growth companies that I think are longer term winners, but the stocks are being repriced. This was December 3rd. Many of these stocks see down 80% of firm lost 90% off the highs. Facebook lost 46%. So I shared this with, with members in Q4 before 2022, right after the Fed shifted gears. And we'll talk about that in just a minute. But I let members know that these high growth stocks are being repriced. And I was scaling across the board out. I sold Unity Software. I sold Snowflake. And we avoided uh, not only massive declines, but I shared this with members along the way. I was not looking at any pullback buys. I wasn't looking to buy any of these stocks on the way down. And, and I'm very proud of the fact that we were able to get out and avoid these massive declines 
in a lot of these growth stocks and, and share that with members uh, right, right before they had a massive uh, sell-off. <clears throat> Excuse me. So number two, we called this move into lower valuation, lower volatility, higher dividend stocks and energy. The move that has worked in 2022, I let members know in December that I expected this move to happen. So December 5th, we published a special members-only blog and video. I discussed in detail past FOMC tightening cycles and what I expected for this one. Three key takeaways. High valuation stocks with no earnings should underperform and should be avoided. And these are those growth stocks that we just looked at down 70, 80%. Lower valuation, lower volatility, higher quality stocks with dividends should outperform. Energy should outperform. The outcome, growth stocks have had a record unwind in 2022. Lower valuation, lower volatility, higher quality stocks with dividends have outperformed. And energy is the top sector year to date. Energy is up 47%. S&P 500 is down 17% SPY. That's a massive outperformance. So we'll take a look. We'll take a look at some posts. So December 5th, 2021, I posted for members a special video and blog titled Our View on the Fed Pivot. And what I shared with members is earnings matter and valuations matter. We followed up December 4th on the member's Twitter page. I put a focus on the the top stocks that were up last week. 19 of them had had profits. Of the bottom 20, only one had profits. So we're focused on profitability and avoid no earnings. December 3rd, 2021. I let members know this was right away that with with Jerome Powell's comments November 30th to move into the tightening phase, I think that there could be some sector rotation and that any stocks that traded higher that week were relevant. So what I was sharing with our website members is always focus on the market, always focus on price. Any stocks that were starting to move higher after Powell's commentary should be paid attention to because those were the new group of leaders. December 2nd, I let members know historically in tightening cycles, higher quality stocks with current earnings tend to perform better overall and more spec- more speculative stocks, no earnings, higher price to sales don't perform well. This is one reason that ARC, I believe that ARC stocks had underperformed since bond yields broke out in February. Once again, letting members know, focus on high quality, focus on earnings, avoid speculative stocks, avoid no earnings, avoid high price to sales. And we know these these higher quality stocks have done very, very well over the past six months. And the stocks that we said to avoid have have really, uh, they've had massive unwinds. December 2nd, I also shared with with website members, having been through quite a few hiking cycles and based on past market reactions, I expect that markets will continue to move into higher quality stocks with earnings and reasonable valuations and growth rates. This has been the sweet spot in 2022. This has been the sweet spot since November 30th and, and our members were alerted right away this is, this is probably a very major shift, and, and we got it exactly 100% right. On December 6th, I shared with members to overweight the energy sector. December 6th, I said I added energy ETF XLE back to the best ideas ETF list this week. Energy could be a top performer. In any hiking cycle and or if inflation is persistent, this was December 6th. The energy sector year to date in 2022 is plus 47 percent. It's the top performing sector by by quite a, a, a wide range this year. And I let members know December 6th, this could be a top performer in this cycle. And, and this has been exactly uh, on the money. So my current open position in Devon Energy, which I started September 14th, it's currently plus 145%. 
I've scaled some gains along the way and I've moved up the stop, but this was shared with members September 14th of last year before a plus 145% move. December 7th, right after I posted that XLE chart, I opened a position in Chevron. That position is currently plus 41%. We've scaled some gains along the way and moved up the stop. In prior to that, in uh, 2020, late 2020, to 2021, I had a position, a core position in energy ETF XOP. We booked gains from 41 to 85% there uh, in the summer. So you can see this was June 18th. I started to scale. I booked profits in XOP at plus 85%, and I scaled out of that position on the way up, and then that eventually rolled into Devon Energy. So this key call here, Overweight the energy sector could be a top performer December 6th, exactly right on the money, plus 47% in 2022. Number five, I'm sorry, number four, I've been over 50% cash as of February 2022. We'll take a look at some screenshots. This has been an exceptional value add for myself and for our website members, greatly reducing drawdown and volatility. So we'll just take a look quick, quickly. Every Sunday, I post for members a weekly trend report, and I do about a 30-minute video, and I cover everything top-down from the indices, commodities, crude oil, the bond market, our top 25 stocks list. And then the key thing I share is my current view and positioning. So you can see, <coughs> excuse me, February 27th, a little bit a little bit darker to read here, but we can see it. February 27th, I was at 55% cash. March 27th, and I post this every week, but this is just end of the month, and, and you can see the progression. March 27th, I was 46% cash. By May 1st, I was at 62% cash. We can see May 1st posted on the members page. 62% cash, and then we'll go down uh, to today, May 22nd. I'm at 61% cash plus an index hedge, and we can see this is May 22nd. So starting February, since February 27th, my average cash balance as shared on the weekly trend report has been over 54%. And that has been a, an exceptional benefit in, in a very, very difficult start to the year in the uh, indices, a very difficult start to the year in the markets overall, and over 54% cash over the past, we're going on now three months, so the better half, that greatly reduces the drawdown right, right, out, of the, right out of the gate. That, that eliminates 50% of the drawdown overall. <clears throat> excuse me, plus keep in mind the overweight in the energy sector. Number five, I shared with members May 1st, 2022, that I'm avoiding the technology sector. And I actually had started a, a moderate short position. I started with triple Q puts uh, in the beginning of May. I closed those out for a 35% gain. And then I rolled that into a moderate sized short triple Q PSQ position, obviously the NASDAQ 100. So we can see this is May 1st. I discussed the technology sector and I said, as these stocks pull back, they will offer good longer term buy points at some level, but I'm still waiting. That was May 1st, NASDAQ 100, 10% drawdown since then. The triple Q puts 35% profits in that position, roll that into PSQ. That's also a profitable position. But this, once again, as I shared with members, and, and we saw this a lot in the media, like everyone, I, I watch the media. I see what's on financial TV. I see what's on CNBC. I see what's on Bloomberg. I see what's on uh, what goes across social media. And I've seen the same uh, market specialist, analyst, newsletter writers similar to myself uh, that have been very bullish on technology all the way down. 
They were bullish on technology in January. They were bullish in March. They were bullish in April. And every time they come on TV, they say now's a good time to buy tech and now's a good time to buy FANG. And some of these stocks are down now 20, 30. Facebook is down 40%. That's not what I do. I, I, I tell my members what I see, good, bad, or indifferent. And, and I just share exactly what I see on the screen. And my view here since, since going back to February has been a lot of cash is good. And we've avoided a lot of that drawdown in the markets. My view here in the beginning of May is I'm not doing anything with tech. So while there's a lot of people on TV that have been saying, you know, Fang, you can't go wrong with Fang in February and then March and then April and then May, and they're all making lower lows. Now, at some point, these tech stocks could bounce back at any time. So I'm not negative on tech. I don't have to be negative on a sector to have a position. I follow the chart and I follow the trends. But but our members, while a lot of uh, newsletters and a lot of these people I see on TV that have that have membership sites have been bullish and buying tech all the way down and holding tech all the way down. That's not been us. That's not been me. I've had a lot of cash. I, I cut a lot of positions out and now I've got a slight downside hedge. This is not a major uh, market call. This is not a prediction on my end that tech is going to go lower but I follow trends. And when the trend is weaker in technology, then I'm looking more to cover my downside. <coughs> Excuse me. And that's what's been going on here. So May 1st, not only was I avoiding tech and holding anything on the way down, but I actually had a small short position through these puts, nice profit there, and then roll that into PSQ. But once again, because I'm holding that position, it's not a prediction on my part that technology has to go lower. It doesn't say that I'm bearish. I do know that markets can rally at any time. But for me, what, what I do is I share with my website members my 24 years worth of experience. I've traded through the 2000 NASDAQ unwind. I traded through the great financial crisis in 2008. I traded through the COVID uh, bear market that we had. And, and I'm not going to come online every day and tell my members that everything looks great when it doesn't look great because we need to protect the downside. So that's why when a lot of these other, uh, you know, media personalities on TV have been bullish and buying tech stocks all the way down, we have, I've avoided that and I've been playing a lot of defense. And then finally, we were positioned long ahead of the record week in commodities. So we've, so we, we got out of tech stocks and we got out of these high growth stocks in Q4 at just the right time. We started to move into energy stocks, lower volatility stocks, low valuation, high dividend at just the right time. 50% cash at the end of February avoided a, a very big unwind in the market, uh, avoided the tech unwind. And, and actually have a short position there to cover that. And then finally, we were along ahead of the record week in commodities. So the Bloomberg Commodity Index had a, its best week ever in 62 years. And we were along ahead of that. And I, and I shared that with members. This is a blog that you can look at with a little bit more detail if you click on to this link on our website. And going into that best week, I had four of my 10 open positions were commodity-based positions. Devon Energy, Chevron, Vale in the steel industry, which we booked very nice profits in before it unwound, and DBC, the commodity index, which we, we booked nice profits in. Also, I shared with members, this is February 24th, before the record week. Uh, <clears throat> excuse me, commodities, gold miners, energy were coming down. Uh, Short covering in the downtrends and profit taking in the uptrends. DBC, the Commodity Index Tracking Fund, still a top idea that I might look to add to at some point. So I had energy exposure. DBC is higher since then. I've booked some nice gains in there. I do have an overweight in the energy sector. But once again, this was four of my 10 open positions shared with members were commodity-based before 
the best week 62 years in the history of the Bloomberg Commodity Index. We were, we were long ahead of the move, ahead of the record week, and that turned out to be right on the money. So as we go through, there, there was a lot. I would say that, that, that we've had six for six on major market calls this year. Uh, I've got a, a tremendous amount of favorable uh, messages from our members, which I'm gl- very glad to report. But the key thing I want to share with our members what I've been at this for 24 years, actively in the market since 1998. So I've been through a lot of market conditions. And what, what my job is to do is present not only best ideas, but best risk management. And that's the key thing. So, it, you know, it's easy to make money when the markets are going up, but it's just as easy to give it back when the markets are going down. We avoided massive Massive declines by selling out of these stocks or firm. I was selling a, thir- a firm in the 130s to 140s, and I think it was recently under 20, was a recent low. We avoided just across the board, moved into energy at just the right time. We, we let members know higher quality stocks with earnings at just the right time. Energy, massive outperformer year to date. So we, we've had uh, a very nice year. I think there's been a tremendous amount of value adds for the members, and I just wanted to share that with you. If you go to our website, bluechipdaily.com, if you're interested in becoming one of those members and and getting alerts before the stocks go down 80%, getting alerts in energy before the sector goes up 47%, and once again, past performance is no guarantee whatsoever. Of, of any future results. I want to be very, very clear about this, but I've been posting my, my insights on Twitter for nine years now, and I've got about nine years of very, very similar market calls overall. Here are, are the members' benefits. We have the premium Twitter page. You've seen a lot of posts there. Real-time notifications of all my position activity buys and sells. We do a daily markets video. We do a weekly markets video. I post a top 25 stocks list for members every single week. We have a high beta list. For those that are looking for the uh, more aggressive, uh, big breakout potential stocks, we have a high beta list. We have a low volatility, high dividend list for those that are looking for a low volatility ideas across the board. And then also we have a 30-day free trial right now, so you can get access to all of the information with no commitment. If you click on this box, bluechipdaily.com, start your 30-day free trial, and it will take you right to the page where you can get started and you can get access to everything that I've just spoken about with no commitment. So that's it for the video. I appreciate everyone's time. Uh, I hope that this has been very beneficial to you to, to see the thought process and the trend analysis that goes into it. And I hope to see everybody on our member's site. Thank you.